California's next big one. It's not if, it's when. Geologists are out with a very startling warning that Southern California is overdue for a major and possibly catastrophic earthquake. A new study says it's expected to hit along the San Andreas Fault north of Los Angeles. It could have a magnitude of 7.5 or higher. That's the ground started shaking, 200 small earthquakes in a little more than 24 hours, almost exactly where earthquake simulators have shown the big one could erupt. Enough to trigger a warning from seismologists. Southern California is long overdue for the big one, but scientists say we're locked, loaded, and ready to roll. Scientists like seismologists and geologists are very familiar with the potential for destruction along California's San Andreas Fault. At some point, the San Andreas Fault in Southern California will have a very large earthquake. The San Andreas Fault will rupture along a very long distance. These images were created by scientists at the San Diego Supercomputer Center at the University of California in San Diego. And it shows the waveforms that would travel through the Earth during a large earthquake of 7.8 on the San Andreas Fault. The San Andreas Fault splits California into two parts. On the east side of the fault is the North American Plate, which is relatively stationary. On the west side of the fault is the Pacific Plate, and it's being pushed to the northwest at the rate of about one inch per year. Some parts of the San Andreas Fault are stickier than other parts. This map from the USGS shows the San Andreas Fault and it also shows the location of all earthquakes over the last 30 days. In the central part of the state near Salinas and Monterey where the green circle is, you can see that there are a lot of small earthquakes on the San Andreas Fault. This part of the fault is relatively slippery compared to other parts of the fault. This part of the fault has many smaller earthquakes and consequently less stress builds up on the fault and it moves in smaller jumps. The part of the fault circled in red has fewer earthquakes and consequently a lot of stress builds up in it and that's where the last major earthquake was the Tejon earthquake in 1857 that resulted in a movement of 17 feet in one jump. It's this southern part of the San Andreas Fault where the Los Angeles newscasters talk about the San Andreas Fault being locked and loaded. Carrizo Plain National Monument is located about 100 miles to the northwest of Los Angeles. It's a large enclosed grassland plain about 50 miles long and 15 miles wide. It's a relatively dry area. Consequently, there's very little erosion due to rain in this area and the scars on the surface of the earth left by the San Andreas Fault can be seen in up close and in person. The best feature to look at if you do visit is the Wallace Creek Interpretive Trail. Traveling by car, it takes about one and a half hours to get to Wallace Creek from Bakersfield. It's a relatively scenic drive along California Highway 58 through the west side of the San Joaquin Valley and then up and over the Tembler Mountain Range. After you drop down the west side of the Tembler Range, you enter the Carrizo Plain and then you just turn south off of Highway 58 onto a dirt road. 
This is a drone flyover of the San Andreas Fault traveling to the northwest. Here you can see where the San Andreas Fault intersects the dry Wallace Creek bed. In this view you can also see the hiking trail from the parking area that takes you up to the San Andreas Fault. This is a map view of the Wallace Creek interpretive trail. The dotted blue line shows the path of the dry Wallace Creek bed. The straight yellow dashed line shows the path of the San Andreas Fault. You can see how movement to the northwest of the Pacific Plate has shifted the dry Wallace Creek bed about 500 feet along the San Andreas Fault. The movement along the fault averages about one inch per year. However, the fault is very sticky in the area of Wallace Creek. Stress tends to build up in this area. On average, the fault jumps about 17 feet every 140 years. It ends up averaging about one inch per year. Based on the average movement of one inch per year, if you were to remain standing at Wallace Creek, you would end up in the area of San Francisco in about 10 million years. The parking area for the trail is seen in the center bottom part of this image, and it is about a one quarter mile hike to get to the San Andreas Fault. The one inch per year of fault movement is just an average over time. And in fact, the San Andreas Fault is totally locked at this location. And scientists estimate that right now, the San Andreas Fault right here at Wallace Creek has about 15 feet of slip stored in it, wound up like a spring, ready to let loose at any time. Recent studies have suggested that major earthquakes on this portion of the San Andreas Fault at Wallace Creek occur about every 140 years. Since the last major earthquake was the Tejon earthquake in 1857 of a magnitude 7.9, you could say that the Wallace Creek section of the San Andreas Fault is due for an earthquake, a major earthquake, any time now. Oh, my God.